language awareness, syntax. Before we start this input, let's just have a quick review of what you looked at in your previous teaching grammar input. In your groups, discuss the following questions. Compare an inductive versus a deductive approach to teaching grammar. And what kind of grammar book does the following? Tells us the rules for how to speak or write. Describes how native users use the language. Is adapted and simplified for learners at various levels. Pause the video and discuss this now. An inductive approach is based on examples of the target language, with the teacher facilitating the class to make a guided discovery of the rules of the target language. As a result, it is student-centred. Whereas a deductive approach involves the teachers giving the students the rules of the target language with no working out necessary. As a result, it is very teacher-centred. A prescriptive grammar book tells us rules for how to speak or write. Think of the word prescription something where your doctor tells you what to do and what to take. Descriptive grammar is about how native users actually use the language. And pedagogic grammar is a more learner-friendly type of grammar that has been adapted and simplified for learners at various levels. Now, let's start thinking about context and meaning. When you look at the next slide, discuss with your partner and group what you think the sentence means. Are you ready? Discuss in your group what meanings this sentence could have. Pause the video and do this now. So you may have come up with several meanings. It could be a very simple, literal description. You see a door that is open and are just commenting on this. But what if it's a door that's not normally open? The meaning changes from literally, the door is open, to a more, hmm, that's strange, meaning. What if the speaker says this just as he has come back from holiday? Now the real meaning is, this is very worrisome. I may need to call the authorities. Maybe the speaker is annoyed with the listener, and the real message is, I'm cold, can you close the door? How does the meaning change if it's a boss speaking to an employee who's knocking on his door? How about if the speaker is a bank manager speaking to a new client? So what does a learner need to consider to understand and use language well? They need to consider who is speaking and who is listening or who the writer is and who the audience is. They need to consider what the topic is. What is the situation in which the language is spoken? Is there a genre? When is the language being spoken? Where is the language being spoken? Why? What is the purpose of this communication? And how? What tone of voice is used? And this is the reason why, when we showed you the sentence, the door is open, I did not read it out loud and merely let you try and come up with meanings with the words alone. The way I said it may have carried a particular meaning. We set the context to show meaning clearly and encourage learners to use context to decide what to write or say and how to write or say it. The meanings can change depending on not just what is said, but who says it, to whom it is said, why they say it, where they say it, and how they say it. In other words, it all depends on the context. Language never exists in isolation. There is always context, and this affects the meaning of the language. 
So what does context include? Why is it important? Take notes on your worksheet now. Have a look at this picture. What's the context here? Discuss with your partner or group, or take a few minutes to think about what the scenario is. Who are they? Where are they? What are they likely to be talking about? So it looks like a fairly informal situation. They're at a barbecue. They're possibly friends or maybe colleagues. Maybe they're talking about the food, or what they've done recently, or sports, or the weather. On the next slide, you're going to read a dialogue and discuss briefly or think about what is strange about it. If you're with a partner, adopt a role, A or B, and read it out loud. Now discuss the following questions. Which speaker is more grammatically correct? Which one sounds more natural? Where might you see the blue text? Well, you probably decided that speaker B is more accurate, whereas speaker A sounds more natural. What speaker B says, i.e. the text in blue, is probably what you would read, rather than hear, on packaging or in a sign at a restaurant. So what is the key point here? The speakers were speaking in different registers, also known as the degree of formality or the language style. Which register a speaker chooses to adopt is dependent on the social occasion. Is it a friend's barbecue, a work function, a family dinner, etc.? The register is also dependent on the purpose of the language and the audience. Take notes on your worksheet now to define what is meant by register. So going back to this conversation, what makes speaker A or B formal or less formal? Have a think about it or discuss it with your group or partner now. You've probably come up with examples where there were instances of formal and less formal lexis, such as patron or siggy. Examples of formal or less formal sentence structure, such as grammatically incomplete sentences versus passives. Phonological variations might include the use of contractions or connected speech in less formal speech. So why is it important for students to be aware of register? It's all to do with appropriacy. There is a spoken grammar and a written grammar, and they can be very different. Speaking in formal written English can be socially counterproductive, so it's important for students to be aware of the differences and the effect. Let's have a look at word order now. What's the meaning of this sentence? Well, it sounds a bit strange, but it sounds like an odd newspaper headline of a man biting a dog. And how do we know this? Because English is an SVO language, having the subject, verb, object structure. So it looks like the man, the subject, bit, the verb, the dog, the object, even though it would make a bit more sense if it were the other way round. But were you to translate this into an OVS language, such as Hickscariana or Klingon, they would understand it as the dog biting the man, because of their particular language's word order. Different languages have different word orders, as you can see from the slide. And in English, when we see a group of words, we assume that they are in a particular pattern, SVO. This pattern, in combination with the meaning of the words in a particular context, is what we use to predict and make meaning. Write these notes down in your worksheet now. So, on the next slide, I'm going to show you a word. 
you just make a note of what you think the next word is. Were you able to predict any of the words? Here's another one. Did you guess any of those? Chances are, even if you didn't guess the exact word, you probably got the part of speech right. Okay, one last one. And how about those? So what did this exercise teach you? Pause the video and discuss this with your group or partner now. So syntax is the grammatical arrangements of words in sentences. These sentence components can be individual words, phrases, or clauses. They have certain functions in a sentence. The functions they perform as components of a sentence are subject, verb, object, adverbial, and complement. We've already looked at how English is an SVO language, meaning it follows the subject, verb, object, word order. Adverbials and complements are less fixed. If learners are aware of syntax, they will process language better, be able to generate new sentences following the same pattern, and have a better chance at understanding and correcting errors. So the pattern plus the lexis plus the context gives the language meaning. Now on your worksheet, match the definitions of each sentence component with the terms. Pause the video and do this now. So the answers should be A, verb, B, object, C, adverbial, D, subject, and E, complement. Because complements and objects get confused so often, let's just go over what complements are. They always follow three groups of linking verbs. For example, the be verb. Angie is a teacher. Angie is great. That means a teacher and great are complements. Complements also follow sense verbs. Frank looks decent. Frank sounds tired. Decent and tired are complements. They also follow state of being verbs. Gus seems good. Gus became a teacher. Good and a teacher are also complements. Some other examples include his face was purple. His hair turned gray. She became older. The milk has gone sour. The crowd grew ugly. So compare Angie is a teacher with Angie killed a teacher. Which syntax component is a teacher in each case? So you should have come up with these. Now, before you look at the next slide, have a look at the subject, verb, object, adverbial complement analyzer on your worksheet. Complete questions 1 to 5 and then 
resume the video. Those first five questions you did on your worksheet should now have set you up so you can do these. Have a look at these sentences. By yourself, or with a partner or group, determine what the syntax components are for each of them. Pause the video now. And here are the answers. Did you get them right? Look at the words that have been underlined as well. In the exam, you will be required to underline the appropriate parts of the sentence as well as identify the components, so that the marker can see you have correctly identified which words make up each component. Note that one component can be made up of several words. Now try these ones, bringing in adverbials. See if you can identify the components. Did you get them right? So you can see, in the last sentence, there are three adverbials because they're answering three different questions. Where, when and why. Now try these ones. They're on your worksheet. Pause the video and do this now. And here are the answers. Discuss with your group the following questions. Why are there two objects in B? Why is a very good teacher in C a compliment? Why is, when he heard the news, not an object? Now try these ones. And here are the answers. In this input, you've learned about context, register, word order, and syntax. If students are aware of syntax, they will be able to process the language better, be able to generate new sentences following that same pattern, and can better understand and correct errors. You've seen that understanding of sentence patterns, plus the lexis, plus the context, gives the language meaning. So in the next section, work with your group or partner to ask and answer any questions that you may still have after watching the video. Organize your notes, highlight the key information about the topics you've covered, context, register, word order and syntax, prepare your questions and any comments that you want to raise with your group. See you at the next OT. Have a good week.